my name's Samantha. Um, this is my Dodge 2005 Sprinter, and I've been living in my van for a year on and off. Come on in. This is my kitchen space. It runs off uh, propane. So I have this propane tank here hooked up with a uh, barbecue extension hose. This is my Camp Everest stove. And yeah, this is um, preferred over the Coleman because you can actually really change um, how hot you want your food. If you want to just simmer it or if you want to blast the heat. Um, it's been great. And I've had this propane stove, propane tank for six months and it's still full. Well, there's still some left in it, so um, it's been a very reliable source of fuel. And I turn my Max Air fan on when I'm cooking. So it directs all the propane out. Kitchen space was super important to me. I need to be able to cook like really nice, nutritious meals. So countertop space, lots of room to chop. I actually have extra room here for the cutting board that props up as well. This is my 12 volt fridge from Nova Cool. Also has a freezer section as well. And yeah, there's been a little bit of issue with solar in the fridge, but we'll talk about that later. Here's my sink and my SureFlow tap. <laughs> and a little gray water tank underneath and a fresh water tank. So it's clean water and gray water. So I have to switch that out every um, week or so. This is for drinking water. And I got this uh, Lemonada electric pump. Um, just off of Amazon, and yeah, it is very convenient because I can also just leave my water bottle to fill up instead of using those Canadian Tire hand pumps where you're like going like this for like half an hour it feels like sometimes. So um, I upgraded to this guy, I think it was 20 bucks, and I'm super happy with it. When I upgraded my van, I really wanted to have overhead um, storage here and yeah um, with the help of a uh, buddy we built these cabinets it was quite the project on installing them um, but yeah they have uh, hinges that stay open when I open them up this is my husky tool chest it wasn't actually my idea the people I and I bought this van off in the very first place had it in here already and I thought it was genius it's amazing um, Everything comes out so smoothly and locks. So you can take a key and lock it. And so when you're driving, everything locks. And then this also pops open too. And that's where I keep my um, camp stove underneath when I am um, driving. I have to put this away every time I drive. That's one um, downside of having a camp stove on top. How I power this fan is by solar power. So I have three now, um, 100 watt solar panels. So that powers when there's sun. <laughs> it powers my fridge, um, these pot lights here, my Max Air fan. Um, I also have an inverter. <sighs> and two AGM batteries. Yeah, one more thing I missed was a water pump that powers the water pump as well. And I have uh, my Adventure solar charge controller right here, which tells me how much solar is coming in, what charge my batteries are at. I actually totally avoid using my inverter right now because if you live in Victoria, we haven't had one full sunny day since December 1st, and it is almost February 1st. So I am relying on my friends right now to help me power my fridge. So as far as hygiene goes, I have a rec center pass. Right now, um, I'm fortunate that um, I'm parked outside a friend's house so I can use their shower. But when I'm on my own, um, Esquimalt Rec Center is my favorite place to go. Go have a sauna, which also keeps me warm at night before I come back to the van and shower there. However, I do shower a lot less living in a van, even though I have access to a shower. I just, it's kind of a bad habit. I shower maybe, once a week, I try to shower twice a week. As a woman, being on your period, living in a van sucks. 
Um, so that's the most challenging part of uh, female hygiene for sure. I used to have a toilet in the van. It was underneath here. However, I took it out because I wasn't using it. I found that there was bathrooms most places. There's lots of public washrooms around, um, rec centers, gas stations, uh, friends' houses. I'm fortunate that I've lived in Victoria for three years, so I have friends all over town. Um, I have a pee cup. You don't have to film that cup, but it's just a little plastic cup that I pee in and chuck it out the window or the van door. Um, and that seems to work really well. As far as storage goes, I have um, some drawers here that I found, um, I think at Value Village, that magically fits perfectly in this little nook. Um, so I just had to like enter from the back of the van and push it forwards. Um, and yeah, pants, socks, bras, underwear. One thing about living in a van, you can never have enough socks um, or underwear. I do like my clothes, so I have an absurd amount of clothes for living in a van, I will admit that. Uh, this is my closet. Um, my like winter sweaters and uh, dresses and shirts. And then I have my summer clothes stored underneath the van for when that transition happens. So we built an overhead compartment. That was a very interesting process to install. Um, and this is just on a few hinges. And this is where I keep my towels, my like big sweaters and jackets. Um, and all my winter, winter stuff. I am a full-time student, so I have a lot of textbooks that I need to still look at and review and study. So I have these two cupboards here for all of my ginormous textbooks. This is a cool random thing. This is a driftwood wedge that I found on the beach. And so uh, I chiseled it out and made like a little shelf totally unnecessary but i was stubborn and uh it took so many hours to chisel it out i needed to put it in the van <laughs> so i ratchet strapped on um this uh, bike rack and it works really well for my bike um putting two bikes on is a little too much weight and the um seal is not super happy um, but it works it's a lot cheaper than getting a hitch and I'm buying a proper bike rack, so pretty happy with it. I also massage as a side gig, so my massage table fits underneath here. I have a bunch of hula hoops in here and like extra bags and baskets. I love making crafts, so this is my craft bin, um, heating pad for massage, ski boots, my skis, an extra table in case I want to like cook outside. And this guy, my dad actually got this for me as a Christmas present. It was kind of supposed to be a joke, but in case I break down, so that I have a little warning sign. <laughs> I live in a van because it's important for my growth right now, to be completely honest. I needed solitude time in my life and I need to live alone. And this is an affordable way of living alone. Other reasons why I live in a van, I wanted to minimize my life. I love nature and living more with elements. And by just opening up my van door, I can be like right next to the beach and be cooking a meal or um, yeah, next to a forest or I mean, let's be honest, in the city sometimes you're in a parking lot, but you're still, there's more fresh air and you're, you're not um, enclosed in a box of a house. So my journey with this van, when you originally filmed me, I was basically just using my van as a, a bedroom. Nothing was set up. There was a little bit of like drama and unsteadiness with the community house I was living in and it wasn't feeling right to be to be there and I needed more security and so I moved into um, a basement suite actually the one I'm parked out of right now and with my buddy Ben and my van was parked in the driveway and I moved in and six months living in the house um, was great I thought about selling my van I was like this isn't for me mainly because I don't have the skills to build cabinets or um, you know make an actual sink happen or hook up solar I had no skills so I freaked out and was like I give up and then beginning of June June 1st 2019 I retore my meniscus 
and couldn't walk for um, like a couple weeks, lost both my jobs, didn't have any EI or couldn't go on disability. So I couldn't pay rent. And I just saw this big honking yellow thing in the driveway and I was like, okay, let's do it. Let's do it for real this time. I had free time. I had access to all the tools, which was super key. Ben um, is the handyman of the lifetime. And so he really helped me, um, give me tutorials on how to use the tools. And um, YouTube was super helpful. And I just called in the friends as I needed them and did a lot of like massage trades and paid the money I could to help um, make this a reality. And um, took the whole month of July um, and part of June to get things started. So two months of, of renos. And then I was full-time in the van August 1st. And I was on the road for, for the full month of August. And yeah, came back here to start school in September and just parked along Dallas and um, back and forth from Esquimalt. And then, and yeah, everything was pretty good until the Arctic fronts came in in October and I freaked out. It was so cold, I didn't have heat. Um, my partner had just left and I was lonely, I was cold. I had just started school again and um, it was hard. And so I reached out again to the community and since like November, December, February, I parked outside friends' houses just to have a hookup for, for heat and now for um, for my fridge because there's been no solar as well. So um, hopefully I'll be back on the road soon and not have to rely on my friends so much. I've definitely, van life has taught me to ask for help when I need it, which doesn't feel easy, but it's getting easier. The financial reality of living in my van and like my story is that I've been living off my visa since I hurt my knee. Um, so I'm really grateful that I don't have to pay rent because I don't even know how I would have paid rent. Um, I mean, I could pay rent with my visa and get a cash advance, but that would, my interest would, it just wasn't feasible, wouldn't be feasible. So um, I am in debt on my visa um, as well as the loan I took out with this van, but um, overall in the grand scheme of things I still see it as me saving money right now because I'm not spending money on rent and the interest on my visa is way less than what rent would be but if I was working right now um, and I just got a job so I'll be starting soon um, then I definitely would be saving money. One of my favorite parts about living in a van is that it forces me to reduce my waste because um, I don't have blue bins or um, a garbage bin that's always accessible for me to um, to use. So I've been an advocate for like a zero waste living for a while before van life. And so now I'm stepping into it even more so. I grocery shop like smaller shops. And so I'm, I'm more mindful about everything I buy. For example, like in this cupboard here, like these two bags um, I go to and like rice and buckwheat um, I go to the zero waste um, emporium to, get to fill up on all of my all of my um, my bulk produce or my bulk food and um, I buy produce there as well and uh, that way I don't have to worry about recycling at all or garbage my only garbage really is I have an addiction to q-tips um, and um, uh, toilet paper um, as a woman for like wiping after I pee and recycling goes I do drink milk and so my milk cartons is my other recycling but other than that um, yeah I it's it's been a great way to reduce my waste living in a van has been a great time to be creative and um, be more like internal and reflective and um, less distracted and so yeah music has been a big piece um, to keep me comforted when I'm lonely um, so I've kind of rediscovered my love for music
the, the advice I would give for um, someone who wanted to move into a van would be ask yourself what what your comfort levels need to be um, in order to do it without anxiety um, or fear. Um, what's important to you in a van? Is cooking really important to you? Is um, having a big bed really important to you? Is having space for like your bike under your bed important to you? Like what, what do you need in your van in order for you to feel, feel comfortable? Um, also, who are you as a person? Um, I have a friend, actually the two friends who really inspired me to move into a van are very like fiery people. And, um, I would say I'm pretty fiery too when it comes to like home and, um, like nourishment, uh, not being in routine, but for me, I really need routine. So, um, van life has been more anxiety inducing than I expected it would be. Um, so I've had to learn learn to work with with that and be comfortable in my discomfort and yeah there you go if you want to live in a van you have to be comfortable in the discomfort of the unexpected i would say i'm not even there which is why i'm parked outside of my friend's house in the winter time i could be really doing it and uh have bought a heater and um been on the road in the winter time but I need to be cozy and in my den and like insecure in the winter time and so that's why I'm parked at my friend's house it's it's not easy it's not easy and like being being a woman being alone I mean Victoria is so safe um, compared to so many places I would say get a dog if you want to live in a van a lot of my friends who have dogs in a van love having a dog and um or like have friends over or like live with a partner that you obviously you know have space eventually <laughs> sometimes sometimes it can be too much living with one person in a van but um yeah no know yourself really well like know who you are as a person and your needs for this time in your life and what you want to experience out of van life um yeah because it can it's a challenging challenging road some challenges I face living in a van are mold um, underneath my bed. Because I have um, this table, which is amazing, um, it actually blocks airflow from directly underneath it. I, I cleaned it off pretty well, mold here. And so as mold prevention, I actually take this out every night when I sleep and I just put it in the front. Yeah, and I, this mattress actually used to be double the size. I like luckily was able to like rip it in half because there was mold like all underneath here yeah it's it's clean now but um yeah that was an issue waking up in the morning time if i don't remember to crack my vent on my max air fan i feel i feel like i can't breathe um like the first thing I do when I get up is like open the vent or even if it's pissing rain and like take a deep breath because um, uh, there's not a lot of airflow in the van. So um, remembering to like yeah, crack vents or like open your doors when you can. That's super important mold prevention. Um, and also finishing all the wood and all the materials um, as you're building so that um, there's less less likely chance to get mold because it really likes to grow on organic materials. A few other challenges that I've had um, in this van is it is a extra long wheelbase. So driving it downtown and finding parking sucks. Um, I have to pray so hard that I'm gonna find parking. Um, yeah, I've, I've managed, I can parallel park it now, um, but I need so much space and I typically like honk really loud just so people know to slow down or like be patient with me um so that's challenging i wanted to do mobile massage with the van but no way it's it's not reliable that i'm going to be close enough to park to the person's house that i want to go to um yeah parking's been been challenging i've been to a laundromat like once living in my van um that's only because I'm super fortunate that I have so many friends. So if I was to go like hang out with a friend, I would just hang out and do laundry at their house. 
Um, and I just avoid doing laundry as much as I can. Um, I'll, if I sweat and things get stinky, I'll just like hang them up and hopefully like they'll kind of air out. Yeah. If you want to like do something, stop talking about it and just do it. Make it happen. Make your life happen. You have the power to change your reality. So if you want to live in a van, make it happen. The universe will make it happen if it's meant to happen. I want to give a shout out to my friend Ben. He has been, is the number one reason why I'm living in a van. He has installed uh, my solar and all of my electrical and has given me all the advice about um, basically everything. Mostly like all the electrical stuff. Um, but he does van build outs. And if any of you are living in Victoria, and you want some knowledge and you're curious on um, solar especially he loves talking about solar and renewable energy and batteries and wiring and all the electrical nerdy things um, get in touch with uh, with him and maybe we can put some sort of comments or how to get in touch with him in the um, in the info box below the video Hi, I'm Forrest. I'm Emily. And this is Ronnie, and uh, we're all part of the different media team. So if you guys enjoyed that alternative dwelling episode you just watched, there's a playlist popping up now where you can continue watching. Or you can go to our second channel where we travel around in this 1989 Toyota motorhome that we restored. We have all sorts of videos detailing the build that we did, what our life is like living on the road. So go ahead and check that out in the description below.